wrestling buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy! Watching on AfterBuzz TV or Podcast One or on the YouTubes, thank you for joining us on the Wrestling and Padres Slamcast. Once again, we got a jam-packed show for you this week. We have Sergeant Slaughter, Legend, WWE Hall of Famer, GI Joe. He's gonna be on the show. You're gonna have a great time. We bad. That's right. We are bad. Yeah, we are. We B-A-D. We bad. Let's get right into it. We got plenty to talk about. Um, at Wrestling Buds on the Twitter, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds. Go to both. Follow us. Like us. Go to our iTunes page. Write us a review. Or give us a five-star rating. That helps us immensely to crawl up that little podcast ladder in this sports entertainment world that people seem to love so much. Like us. I'm at Jay Quasto, at J-Q-U-A-S-T-O. The man sitting over there with the lovely shirt that we're probably going to talk about all show. <laughs> he is the host of the Curtain Jerks podcast. You can find him on Twitter, at Curtain Jerks. He is none other than Scott Narver. They look beautiful. What's up, buddy? I want to know... Uh, who was the puke and who was the maggot? Was it you or Dale? Which one was which? Generally. Hey, hey, watch that language. Dale. Oh, did you say maggot? Dale. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, Dale's getting a round of applause for that one. Wow. Oh, that was funny. Oh, I love wow. you so much, Dale. That was oh, amazing. Wow. Uh, so, Scott, did that answer your question? Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> no, it did not. Well, they raised new ones. Yeah, sure did, and that's uh, that's a good way to do things. So that's uh, that's. Scott Narver, everybody. The man to his right, he is the pride of TCU, the pride of Houston, Texas. Had to make sure that I was correct in my I saw that. geography. I saw to that. his right. You can find him on Twitter at crice 17 He's Chuck Rice. He's a man. So we hung out this weekend. Yeah, we did. That was really cool. It was fun. So uh, we, well, Johnny knows what it's about. But I can't tell all of you guys what it's about quite yet, but, but I will tell you we did some things. that I've been teasing it a little bit on the show for weeks. Oh, tease us, tease us. I am working on a really cool project with Rob Van Dam. And now that, me, apparently. And now and now Johnny LaQuasta was a part of it. <laughs> well, but it has know. but here's the cool thing. It only loosely touches on wrestling. It really right. has nothing to do with wrestling, but I promise you, you guys will love it. It's uh, you needed a physical therapist. We did, and you needed a medical office. We and did. I was able to, and you also needed someone incredibly handsome, and I was able to provide all three. Yeah, we couldn't find the incredibly handsome person. You so son we had of a bitch. So we had to settle on you, man. That's fine. But, you know, two out of three ain't bad. Hey, for real. Fix but, it in post. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can we get that face fixed in post, man? Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's gonna be a really cool project. Um, um, it will have to do with some controversial topics, mm -hmm. and I think you guys will find it fun, interesting, and informative. Absolutely. So. And also, we want to give a shout-out to, to one of our favorite yes. listeners, but let's introduce the next guy first, because he also wants to give a shout-out to that guy. Okay. This okay. dude coming to us from Washington, D.C. He is Vest for Business. Find him on Twitter at the Walking Dale, and also on Dishing on Movies. You know him, you love him. He be Dale Rutley. I got a puppet. I got a puppy. Bad news. Dale Rutledge, what's up? Nope. How you doing? <laughs> what's up? How's it going? How's it going? Good. Apparently, you also got a package as well as Chuck <laughs> did from, not that kind of package. You received one in the mail from our boy Peter Morris at Pocket Wookie. Uh, go ahead, guys. Explain under, what you got. Pocket underscore Wookie. Sorry. Pocket underscore Wookie. Go for it. Dude, these things are awesome. Mm -hmm. We got like, like I didn't get any uh, soon. Well, Dale, uh, Dale got some. I got some. If you guys follow him on Twitter, he very talented is an amazing artist who draws a different wrestler every day. Right. And he has a company that you know he sells art. Um, and one of the things he sent us was he turned all of these drawings that he'd done into little like trading cards. That's so dope. And they are really awesome and really cool. Dale, what did you get? 
I think I got the same thing. Um, it's the trading cards, and then there's a lot of um, the, the, my favorite, of course, are the wrestling compadre ones. Because I mean, yo, he sent us a card with us on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say wait, what? wait, that one wasn't in mine. Say what? <laughs> Ooh, you gotta collect them all, guys. <laughs> gotta collect. Yeah, them we're all. gonna have to do some trading, like, like, yeah, like Scott said, like Pokemon. <laughs> we're gonna mm-hmm. have to do some card swapping. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> But Wrestling compadres, I choose you. <laughs> you know, we we should give back to Peter. We should get him some brand new Apple watches. Or perhaps a trip to Hawaii. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know he has an art show coming up. I don't have the details, but follow him on Twitter at Pockets. Pocket underscore Wookie. Mm-hmm. You will be entertained every day. He's fantastic. Well, thanks, you can, Pete. You can find the uh, the wrestling drawings on Instagram. That's like a more complete, easier way to uh, see the full collection as well. I'm loving that. That's so cool. And speaking of cool, Dale, we are going to do a SummerSlam contest, ain't we? <coughs> We sure is. We just got to figure out what it is. I, I have a, a really great idea for the prize. I just got to figure out how we get there contest-wise. But mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I'm going to really dig it. Well, when we come up with the idea, is there any chance I could announce it as Teddy Long? Would that be cool with you? Uh, what don't you announce as Teddy Long? Tag team match! I don't know. A couple things. You need a suit three times the size of you. Oh, I'm down. Put I don't know. I, I would just rather have Teddy announce it for us than have you try and be Teddy. Let's True. call him. Let's we should. Him. We should get Teddy back on the show. Let's get him back on the show. Where's he live anyway? Do we know? I think he's in Atlanta. Oh, man. I want him in the studio. Someday. Hey, he, you know what, Johnny? Of all the people we've like interviewed and sat down and talked with on this show, yep. he is still one of my favorites. Oh, without no question, no question. Uh, that's why it'd be great to interview him in person. A lot of fun. But yeah, we're gonna do a contest. Uh, you're gonna get something free. And we just got to figure out what to do. So that's our plan, which is no plan, really. So send in your money now <laughs> in order to get in yeah. on the contest. <laughs> to, to, what is it, something something, Mr. Happy or Happy Dude? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, it's like one Simpsons? of those uh, infomercials from the 80s, like uh, no PO, PODs? No, that's the band. Uh, no CODs. <laughs> yeah, no PODs. We don't I want any so PODs. Alive! You remember, you remember that episode of The Simpsons, though, when Homer has, like, the little auto-dialer, and it's like, if you want to be happy, send $1 to Happy Dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I love well, maybe it. Maybe I should try that. You should. Good times. <laughs> I think you should. All right, well, let's get in. We got plenty of stuff to talk about. By God, Battleground is over. Monday Night Raw is over. And a couple things went down. We already know that arguably the main event, well, not arguably, definitely the main event of SummerSlam is going to be... Grim. Reaper. The Undertaker taking on Barack Lesnar. Dale. I mean, did, did y'all see this coming? I mean, we talked about it a little bit last week. It was in my prediction of, like, wild hair schemes that could possibly go down, but I really didn't expect it to fully take shape at Battleground itself. Uh, did y'all see this coming? Well, here's the thing. There were internet rumors. I don't pay attention to those. You may have heard that before. So... I was surprised, but I wasn't fully on board until after Monday Night Raw. I was a little sketch about it after uh, Battleground, but the way Raw played out so amazing, I'm like, okay, this is cool. I, I have why, were you sketch, why were you sketch about it? I don't know. To me, it was like, when Undertaker, well, the, the main event didn't start until like two and a half hours in. I'm like, this is going to be weird. Then The Undertaker showed up completely out of the blue, and it just... For, to me, it was almost like, all right, how can we keep the title on Rollins a little bit longer? All right, Undertaker, go. But it made more sense on Monday Night Raw for me. That's just the feeling I got. I might be wrong. I don't know. You know, unfortunately, this was spoiled for me by some people on Twitter. Oh, The Undertaker. The... Unbelievable. Why did he tweet you that? <laughs> oh. You yeah, got to block what, what, him. Yeah, what, I'm coming, Chuck. Well, don't worry. We have stories about that from this weekend, too. <laughs> I thought it was great the way they did it. You know... I thought it, it really did work for keeping the title on Rollins in a way that made him just look like... I mean, there's no other way to put it. Rollins looks like a little bitch right now, yep. and he's doing it in the best way possible, which works for him. Yeah, you know? I like how he's like, uh, yeah, it's a good thing they're both out of here. I was, was going to lose my temper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I like that a lot. Me too. But Where did he and the ref go at Battleground? That's what I want to know. I don't know. That, that was a little bit of... You know, for me... 
uh, that was the only qualm I had with it, where it's like it wasn't, it just was over, and there was no like, you know, like he said, we didn't get the announcement and still your champion because I expected him to like do something, you know, like yeah, I'm still a champion, celebrating, you know, kind of like he did on Raw at the pay per view. Maybe he hit the outside, Scott, and maybe Hornswoggle was like took the little uh, curtain that was like, hey, you want to grab a drink? And he's like, okay. And he just rolled under yeah, the ring. let's go to Little People's Court. Maybe that. And get a restraining order against yeah. the Undertaker. Maybe. Right. Because, I mean, well, then, then again, though, the Undertaker generally is the judge backstage. Mm -hmm. But not in Little People's Court. He's too big. Way too big. Way too big. So, so, his, yeah, his foot's the gavel. Mm -hmm. So here's my question, though. Does this mean we're not going to have a championship match at SummerSlam? That's a good question. Dale, what did you think of on Raw? The standoff between John Cena. Dude, I didn't I didn't like it. I don't know what the hell's going on. I do not want to see champion versus champion. No, no. John Cena is on such a roll of helping get over the mid card guys or the newbies or whatever you wanna say. I'm loving this entire run with the US belt. I do not need him anywhere near the main belt. Plus, we've already seen him and Seth Rollins go at it not that long ago. I mean, that triple threat that he had with Brock Lesnar and the two of them was, was an awesome match, but it wasn't, was it Royal Rumble? I mean, that wasn't that long ago. Do you so think... I, just, I don't know if I really want him in the main title. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that while I agree with what you're saying, I don't think we need to see John Cena in the main title picture. I would not have a problem if at some point, I don't want to see it right now, yeah. but if the John Cena that we've had for the last couple months since he won the U.S. title were to face Seth Rollins, I'd be okay with that because this is a different John Cena. This is a... I, I dare I say... What scheme is it? It's way different. <laughs> way different. To, to me, do you feel like... This is almost like a, a rush situation where, like, all right, we got Taker versus Brock. It's SummerSlam. Maybe ratings have dipped. We need to have the championship revolving around. Do you feel like they just felt like they have to put John Cena in the main event to satisfy sponsors, Dale? Do you think that's the situation? But, uh, I don't think sponsors really care. I mean, as, as long as, especially with the way that the network is working now, it's, it's such a different, the buy rate is not... Uh, a real issue. I mean, they're and plus sponsors are paying a flat fee, generally speaking, and then uh, programming is, is put around them as far as what they do inside promotion wise. But I don't know. I mean, I guess the other problem is who else is a big star that you have Rollins go against? If, if he, here's the thing. you have Brock busy, it's like I guess you, you turn to Cena because he is going to be the other big name and you want a big name in your main event title one. for some of them. Scott, I got one for you. Scott Narber has one. This is a man who's been wronged. Uh oh. It's a man who's angry. Oh boy. Man whose foot was mangled. Dear God. It's time to come back from fire, Wait. hellfire, and brutality. Yes. You talking about that damn demon? Uh, yes. It's what? time for Kane. Yes. To come back and rise up. This is the time you got Taker versus Brock. Yeah. And then you get Demon Kane back fighting you against Rollins. That's right. That. Would that be would an be awesome an main show. event. I'd be more. I, yes. I'm sorry. I'd be more excited for Rollins and Kane than I would be for Cena Rollins. What do you think about Dale? Are we saying Kane back with the mask? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, Demon Kane and a, and a walking boot. <laughs> and a walking boot. If he's with mask and walking boot, then I'm into it. If he comes back as corporate Kane, I don't want that. And I know it's only a difference of a mask, <laughs> really. Yeah. No, I say you go there's, old school. There's a lot of nostalgia with him in the mask for me. And I say you really old school Kane, like the, the one long sleeve, the one short sleeve attitude era Kane. And you get voice mm -hmm. box back. I feel like we should have these like crazy, almost like what Taker did for WrestleMania. We didn't see him until WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Let's start getting these like cryptic, ominous like vignettes or whatever leading up to SummerSlam, where somehow a challenge is made, and we just see like little parts of the mask and stuff. So where Kane comes back and makes a challenge for Rollins, I don't want to see. Cena's doing, like you said, Dale, he's, Cena's doing great with the U.S. title. He, you have him face someone for that title or in a four-way, that's another main event. And then Rollins and Kane could just be a nice little addition to that. But you, but, but see, while you guys are acting as if that little segment on Raw last night set up a I Cena feel like Rollins it is. match, I feel like it didn't set that up at all. Really? I feel like Shit. it was just like, you know, we need someone to come out here and put Rollins back in his place, you know, because that's what happens every week. Rollins runs his mouth and someone cuts him down to size. Johnny, you know, 
Like, and I don't think this is setting up a match between the two of them yet. I don't know. I think that, you know, all the pieces that were in that three-on-three match at the end of the Raw, I think a bunch of them are going to be in a match with Cena for the U.S. title. I hope so. Dale, what do you think, man? That that standoff really... I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like we haven't gotten the full effects of this Rusev, Cesaro, who, by the way, I guess is eight. Um, is what? Four-way uh, or, or whatever. I just feel like there's a lot of contenders. I mean, it might be Rusev and Ziggler, though, is the thing mm. uh, for SummerSlam. So I don't, I don't know if Rusev would be in that contention anyways, but... Uh, did you guys feel like The Undertaker coming back and cutting this promo in any way, does it kind of undersell Wyatt? <laughs> it's like he wasn't, he just realized he was pitched past this or something? It seems kind of weird. Well, well Undertaker no, defeated no. back after Wyatt a year from now, so Under- don't worry about that. But Taker defeated Wyatt, though. He has no, he has no beef. I don't, I don't think so. I think it was one of those things where he's like, you know what? I've tried to move on. Like, he has the right to brag about it a little bit because, you know, he beat me. Streaks are meant to be broken. Fine, you know? Yeah. But I thought I, I think his promo on Raw was great. I because loved it. it. Loved because it. it's, it's talking about, look, you know, you won. Great. Okay. Streaks are meant to be broken. It happens. But you just had to keep being a dick. Yes. And keep poking me and keep poking the animal in the cage till finally the cage gets broken and I'm coming out to get you. And yeah, Paul you gotta Heyman. Stop po- poking that dick. Don't poke that dick. Don't poke that dick. And Paul <laughs> Heyman. Don't poke that dick. And Paul That's Heyman continued to poke that dick when he said this. You can sell your soul to the Lower the blood pressure. I'm an advocator of ass belongings, too. Well, there you go. Let's talk about this for a second. I think Brock Lesnar might beat Undertaker at SummerSlam. Wow. Really? I do. Why? I really do, because I think, and this is this is just what I think, could be completely off base, but what I would like to see, I've always said and maintained that I want to see Undertaker have one last match at WrestleMania coming up mm-hmm. in Texas, and that be the end for him. Against, don't you think this I would be think, Taker wins and they have a rubber match, or you, you think they're done no, after this? No, see, I think I think Taker loses this to set up a rubber match where he's like, you know what, we're going one more time on my home turf in my backyard but already, in Texas, mm. and you're not going to beat me at WrestleMania again. You've had my number, and he goes out on top over Brock at Mania. But Brock already would have two wins over him. I don't know. What do you think, guys? I don't know. I, I don't really know how this will go. I I feel like they brought up the fact that Brock hadn't been submitted or, or pinned in like two and a half years or something. I mean, he's only had five matches probably in that time period. <laughs> Arguably. Uh, it was an interesting uh, fact that they've never really mentioned before on air. So I, I don't know. Do you have Undertaker be the guy that, that pins him? It just doesn't really... I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that does Undertaker any good or if it matters. I think you, this eventually, if there is a rubber match, it builds to Survivor Series. I feel like that's Taker's show. I agree. More I, than WrestleMania. That That's something else then at that point. Like yeah. WrestleMania, you're getting another match out of him because we've seen the Triple H and Shawn right. Michaels matches. And in my opinion, I feel like, obviously Taker wouldn't be here right now if he didn't want to be. I feel like this is his farewell tour to where he's like, all right, one I'm more really SummerSlam. here, by the way. I'm really glad he's here. Who's here? Undertaker. Right now? Yeah, you said he's really glad that he's here. I'm glad that he's here. What, you mean... <laughs> Reaper. That Undertaker? That Undertaker. I didn't mean physically here right now. Oh. Yeah. I prefer Biker Taker be here. Yeah. Well, I, then we're going to have to listen to Limp Bizkit. Let's not. No. Let's, but my point rock. is, I think he's doing like a farewell tour where he's like, all right, I want to do one more SummerSlam, one more Survivor Series where he debuted, and then end it all at WrestleMania. I think that'd be a beautiful see, retribution. See, I... I personally don't even really want to see that. Like Why? the fact that, like the fact that, like I'm, I like. Look, Taker's. It's great to see Taker. I, I understand why they're putting him on SummerSlam. They need to make it a big deal. SummerSlam's their second biggest pay-per-view of the year. I get it. It makes sense. But 
Undertaker, look, and, and I'm sure I'll catch some heat for this. He doesn't look to be in the best of shape or condition he, right now. He's in better he shape looks, than he was at WrestleMania 30. But he looks rough around the edges, man. But with no shit. He's 53 but, years old or Exactly. Whatever. So Let him be. So why, like, quite frankly, I really just want to see Undertaker do one more match at WrestleMania. Sounds like you're calling him out for WrestleMania, Chuck. Whoa. You're are you making the challenge? You're saying he looks rough around the edges and you got it. Oh, man. Uh, uh, I'm not, say, I'm not saying that at all. You heard it here first. Chuck Rice challenging the Undertaker. The Wait. Undertaker at WrestleMania 32 in that Chuck's is, home state. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it's been made. That's a challenge. Oh, it's been made. That is not, words. That is not Undertaker, it's his listen. yard. It's his yard, listen, Texas. Yeah, he listen. owns your ass. <laughs> yeah. Listen, okay, Which jokes joke. aside, jokes aside. Yeah. This is not a joke. Get those jokes Dale, out we're of not the way. Joking, are we? Let's really talk some trash. Dale, we're not joking. Anyway, Undertaker has always been one of my favorites. Always been. Till you whoop his ass. Till I whoop his ass. Okay. And I really want to see him go out with one last good match. I don't. You don't want to see a farewell tour. He debuted at Survivor Series. Why would you I not really want to see him one more time at Survivor Series? Because Bring us I'd back rather, to the nostalgia. Because I'd rather see it all left on the line at the biggest stage of them all in his home. I'm sorry I have to hit this, but... Your beard is a little sideways. <laughs> Let it be. That's how I feel, you know? like Because because I honestly don't know if he can survive a physically intense match with Brock Lesnar right now. Look, we saw the brawl last night. Taker held his own, and it was pretty awesome. Dale, your thoughts? That was an um, amazing segment for, for TV in general, but especially for Raw. I mean, it was like... I don't know. There was such passion behind both of those guys that I love that the whole locker room basically had to come out and uh, keep them separated. My man, Curtis Axel. Yeah, why is Axel still dressed like Hogan? <laughs> Brother. What the hell are you doing? Lord. Poor guy. He, he can't get that dye out of his beard at this point, probably. Oh, but. God. I'm, I was glad to see Sandow dressed like Sandow. Why he's not doing anything, I don't know. That's a shame he's not on television. Look, yeah, that was that was short lived. This is uh, sad. This is exactly what I was fearing that would happen once they separated them from me. You know, it's uh, it, it's worse than what we feared. We're not even seeing him. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's a damn shame. But back to Undertaker. The Undertaker. I look, I like I, I like Undertaker. I, when he's on TV, it's good TV. He he probably will have a good match with Brock. That's that's not the question here. My concern is that we saw what happened to him after his first match with Brock at WrestleMania two years yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean Brock has a tendency to hurt people. Yeah, and <laughs> you know. And it's Undertaker and Undertaker's not the type of guy that's going to hold back either. You well, know, no. they're both going to leave it all on the line in there, and that concerns me that Taker might not be physically able to go at a match at WrestleMania. And I, I don't well, buy that. Like I think months from now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's months from now, and I think Taker rises to the challenge. And after that match, and so many people having doubts of him from being hurt from one match, and then they go like, "Oh, he doesn't have it anymore." Like, what yeah. is that? Of course, but, he does. But, but again, I'm not saying he doesn't have it anymore. Yeah, I know. You just want it all in, in one match. That <laughs> no, that's not what. I'm, but that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying I'd rather have that one last match that is like the most memorable thing, and he rides off on the the sun in his terms and you know what if this is his terms then so be it like i mean in the moonlight well i think the take-home message here is undertaker grow a set and accept (laughs) accept chuck rice's challenge at wrestlemania 32 yeah stop being a bitch (laughs) grow a set that's right Listen, I would I don't, I don't see less. I don't see why a match at Survivor Series would take anything away from having a match at WrestleMania though. I would love I mean, it if, for... this is, if this is the last leg of us seeing him, don't you wanna kinda I do. see him as much as you can before he heads Because I off think it takes the, away some of the spectacle of it. But WrestleMania thirty two is already gonna be huge. For me, Survivor Series I used to love it because whether it was on Thanksgiving like back in the day mm-hmm. or just on the Sunday of Thanksgiving week, the nostalgia of that is so fun. Like I got so excited, like oh it's Sunday night it's Thanksgiving week and Undertaker was always such a huge part of that. It'd be great to see him back at Survivor Series. Fighting the gobbledygooker. That son of a bitch. Bury him once and for all. <laughs> that damn chicken. Man, I was, I was the, so the, pissed. The bad thing is, though, is that WWE hasn't really treated Survivor Series like it's one of the big four in a while. I mean, they had True. The Rock come and do that tag team 
thing, if you want to count that as like a specialized event thing, but it hasn't really been what it used to be in years. Mm Hell, Battleground means more than Survivor Series right now. Mm -hmm. It was huge. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Then let's not forget who else came back. I know we're talking about Undertaker and Noah, and the listeners should say (laughs) what they want to see at this point. Yes. I think they should be writing on the Facebook and the Twitter. Do they want Taker in just one match, or do they want him in several matches? But Luke Harper came back. How about that? Looking like the Unabomber when he showed up. That was hoodie. awesome. Yeah. Him and Wyatt back together, I guess. Yeah. I like this story right now. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. Family's coming back together. That's a beautiful thing. And it's a beautiful thing that him and Roman are going to continue this. I really like the anyone but you moniker and everything that's going on with that. Mm-hmm. So so how long till Dean Ambrose turns on him and joins the Wyatt family? I don't know. Something's got to happen with Dean because right now he's just kind of plug and play. He's not like uh, there has no story I mean, around I- him. I think that this is either going to go into a tag team of, of Ambrose and, and Reigns versus the Wyatts, or even maybe a, a triple, a three-on-three, three, depending on, uh, you know, if, if anybody comes out to help either side additionally. I'd love to see Bo Dallas come out there and, and finally join his brother. I think that could be a fun way to kind of twist this and make it something new, even though it's kind of an old, an old feud. Well, there have well, you know there have been like rumors circulating that the Wyatt family was always supposed to be getting a new member. Really? Uh, and you know, um, yeah, that was going on for a while. And then you know, also, uh, what's his name? Um, Rowan is um, injured or something. Um, or? Injured, so mm-hmm. he's going to be out for a while. So this might be the perfect time to have someone like Bo Dallas join them. Have how some, we see the how success? would that character join the Wyatt family though? Bo Dallas's character. I just, mean. just ha- I mean, very simple. Just have Bray Wyatt come out and be like, look. Cut the crap. Everybody knows you're my brother. You're making a fool of us. Get where you need to be. Get in line with the family. Done. Scotty? That's the same words he's going to say to The Undertaker. Yeah, oh, that's right. Grow a set. <laughs> uh, I, I think they see the success that there is with primetime players in resurrecting those guys and putting them back together. Mm-hmm. So the idea that factions or teams are lived, you know, once every 10 years or something like that. I think that's old. I think you could do things like this every so often where the Wyatt family returns and then has a new member and it doesn't feel like you're crapping on a legacy or anything like that. It's just sure. make it story that they join back together for I would love a new purpose. member, but is anyone intimidated by Bo Dallas? You look at Rowan and Harper, you're scared. You look at Bo Dallas, you're like, oh, he's wrestling in underpants. Well, well that's because of the character that he's portraying right now. Dress him up like a, you know, backwoods <laughs> like Sister yeah. Abigail. Were you intimidated by Sister Abigail? Perhaps. Were you intimidated by Michael McGillicuddy? But then the second that Paul Heyman says he's now Curtis Axel, and you go, "Ooh, I buy this." No. You can repackage any. Dale, were you? you, Did you buy Curtis Axel, Dale? Wait, Curtis Axel. That's because they booked him wrong. But at the first night when he came out, everyone was like, "Oh hell yeah, this is awesome." Um, I didn't really think that. Chuck always liked Curtis Axel. I never really figured out why. All right, fine. Okay, fine. But fine. So, so much. did you guys find Dr. Isaac Yankum all that intimidating back in the day? Well, dental nope. work is extremely important. <laughs> nope. But when he came out as Kane, all of a sudden, he's one of the scariest dudes in WWE. Well, clearly. I'm just saying you could repackage anybody, and f- in that initial moment, you'll care, and you'll they'll have all the credibility in the world. So you could do that with Bo Dallas. And, you can do that with anybody. And Bo could be the first line of defense for the Wyatt family. He could be the one that gets his ass kicked every single time, mm-hmm. while Harper and Bray... He could be their Spike Dudley. There you go. Okay, then head and him there, on board. There is a little... There you go. Spike Dudley is a good example. There is also a, a little um, rumor floating around for who the third person would be if it did go that way for uh, who would join... Uh, Ambrose and Rain. Virgil. Oh, son of a gun! <laughs> yeah, no longer lonely. Always Virgil fellas. with you. Always Virgil with you. Can we? Can we? Can we just pause for a second? Have you guys seen? No. The GoFundMe that Virgil created. I don't want to know. Oh, I don't. It's yes, too sad. Whatever. It is it's, it's too gross. just. Ridiculous! No, I can't even it? fathom that it's real. What, what's it? What is it? It's he's, not. It's he's not. It's asking really gross. people to donate money to him to make him become a millionaire so he can be the million dollar man. You gotta be shitting me. No, that's what it is. Straight up, flat out. <laughs> Never mind that <laughs> money in WCW, buddy. But Never he just that. wants people to hand him money so he can be the real million dollar man. I I I, I feel horrible because I. He legitimately has a mental illness. He Give does. Him goods for no services. Yeah. <laughs> he, has, he has mental illness, and that's a sad thing. Because that's a, who the hell would do that? 
Anyway, it's not right. Virgil. That Why do you about. you brought us on Virgil? Yeah, Dale. Who's the rumor? Uh, Sting. What? Yeah, Virgil's gonna be Sting. For, wait, the Wyatt family? No, he's gonna join with Roan, Reigns, and Ambrose. Yeah, you got to remember the question before you. Before I didn't just... remember. I I was still mesmerized by. <laughs> wait a minute. So they would be like a new Shield. No, they're no, saying you know, there's a Magic Summer Slam. They're saying it's a Magic Summer Slam. They would just the be Magic three Summer people Slam. taking on the Wyatt. Uh, and if you think about it, that night after uh, WrestleMania, I'm sure they weren't thinking of this far ahead. So. But that night after, the Raw after WrestleMania, they had Sting and Bo Dallas have a little bit of a, a beef there. I don't know if you remember. Okay. Um, it might have only been on the network. I don't even know if it aired on actual Raw. Yeah, but it, we was, were there it was on the before. network only. Got it. Yeah. But, oh, right. But I don't know. I mean, it could be something that they they have five weeks, so they can bake whatever into it. But it would be a good way to have Sting on the card and not have to do a lot of wrestling. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. goof. It doesn't, I don't know. I'm actually I'm just like really excited to see what WWE does right now because they had a really good pay per view at Battleground. Yep. Like it, it top to bottom, including the Sheamus Randy Orton match, mm -hmm. was a great match. Yeah. You know. And they're going into SummerSlam, and they did announce a huge match right on Raw last night. Despite how everyone, like I might feel about it compared to you guys, Undertaker versus Brock is a big time match. Hell yeah, it is. So that's your SummerSlam main event. So they have, you know, I want to see how they fill out the rest of the card. Yeah, there's a lot of questions, and we love it when there's questions. Uh, one thing we're not questioning is the fact that there were two Divas matches on Raw. They both went to a commercial break, and they were both freaking awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We had Sasha and Charlotte uh, taking on Brie Bella. I'm sorry. Um, Sasha versus Charlotte versus Brie Bella. Uh, that was on SmackDown. Charlotte made Brie tap. And then on Raw, Charlotte won again. Sasha Banks won her match. So cool, man. Guys, I have a problem right now. That you actually... I, I, don't, have, I don't have a bathroom break during Raw anymore. Jesus Christ, Dale, go ahead. <laughs> You're only watching the Hulu version in the first place. How many bathroom breaks do you need? Uh, I have been watching torrented versions so I can watch the three hours. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> one in a row. One in a row. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think this the is great. Is I don't know. This is another thing that I'm not sure what they're building towards, but I, I guess it could be a... A triple threat tag team? Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing. You know, it's, but, you know what this is doing? It, it's extending Nikki Bella's title reign. But you know what? She's going to break AJ Lee's streak. I, I've been saying that since it, it was ever in question. I mean, they're not they're not going to keep a reign on somebody who just up and quit. I mean, she quit in the proper procedure or whatever you want to say. Like, she did the right thing as far as contractually speaking. But, I mean... They're not concerned with her keeping any part of a legacy when nope. she only was there for, you know, six years or whatever. Like, they would much rather it be Nikki Bella, who's still there and is dating the dude in the, in the company. And she'd be on Toad's Devers. Ah. And she's on Toad's Devers. And she, I mean, she is really, I mean, as much as people give her crap, she is definitely the embodiment of what they like a diva to be as far as being good in the ring and, and being able to do multimedia things. So oh, in yeah. WWE size, I'm we, sure. And have a clone of yourself. And have a clone. And we love Nikki Bella. She's always been super cool in interviews. Every time she sees us, she at least pretends that she remembers us, which is more than a lot of people. Like, she's really cool. And her character, it's fun to make fun of her character because she is pompous and, and you know, more power to her. But this, Look, this revolution we're having with the divas, it's been, the matches have been fantastic phenomenal so far and it's great to that they're letting them go and give brie credit too because sure. you know like in the match at battleground like while she wasn't as heavily involved as the other two the spots that she was involved in she did okay at yep you know so it's working you, you know what i really want to see come from this though what I, I there was one part on commentary on raw this week that i really enjoyed um was when the three girls of bad were sitting there and they were talking about we she, has, she has her daddy come out with her all the time. Tamina doesn't need her daddy here. Ooh. I want to see Tamina versus Charlotte with legends in their corners. That'd be pretty dope, for sure. I love Naomi on the mic. Fantastic. Naomi on the mic is great, and Tamina could really take a few pointers from her. <laughs> really. I don't think they, Tamina doesn't have to talk. There's no need. 
well, then don't, yeah, don't put it on the commentator table. Then. No, take that headset away. But I just think that point was cool that they made. You know, like, yeah, you know, don't forget, she's got a legend daddy, too. Yeah, that's true. But good stuff, though, overall. Yeah, I mean, we, we actually saw him at 25. That's the last time I've actually seen her death. Yeah, it's been quite some time. Speaking of divas, though. I have. Been, we've all been kind of questioning this whole thing, uh, Lana, Summer Rae, for a couple of weeks. Ziggler, Rusev, what exactly is going on? After what Lana and Summer Rae did last night, and Rusev, they look beautiful. I'm on board with this. Rusev continues to get better and better on the mic every week. He finds something. He has a golden comment every week now that is so creepy and disturbing. Last night he kisses Summer Rae and then opens one eye and stares at Lana while doing it. That's <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. That's gold. You don't kiss that way. What? I don't. I don't kiss Scott. You don't. You what? No, I don't. Why not? I'm, I don't. I don't want to know what Scott's looking at when he's kissing her. I don't you look know. for attackers, Dale, <laughs> from all sides. Jesus. Always be aware. <laughs> but did anyone else agree with me? I think last night what they did was fantastic. Look, you you will never hear a disagreement from me when you're singing Rusev's praises. Oh, I've I've, I've been concerned singing about the first his praises sentence. for. <laughs> as long as anyone. But so. he's really he's impressed everyone with how funny he is on the mic, but yet he's still a heel. I, I just, I love what he's doing. Yeah. I like that he's no longer one note. Yes. Well, and having having Summer Rae dressed exactly like Lana was the fucking best. Mm -hmm. That was like such a hardcore diss without having to do anything. Like she didn't have to say right. anything at all. It was great. And it was such a nice build up there when, when Rusev looks at Lana and goes, you look tired. Perhaps you get sleep. Okay, my match now. And then he walks away <laughs> and Summer Rae's like, oh, Lana. And then bam, right in the kiss or just smacks <laughs> her on. And then Lana attacks during the match and then she like gets up, you know, just gets herself all fixed again and just walks back out. It was so well done. It was it was great. It really was. Kudos, ladies. I don't know what's going to happen at SummerSlam. I would like to see Lana Summer Rae one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure that won't happen. We'll probably get a mixed tag. I like the idea of the mixed tag. I think it's either, it's either going to be a mixed tag or just straight Ziggler Rusev. I don't even know. I mean, the girls certainly are involved a lot, so I'd be surprised, but with the diva revolution that's happening, I don't, I don't know if you put this on the card when you have the well, other girls who have been if, I say give so it a well, slow like, burn if there's any pay-per-view to have Lana debut in the ring uh, it's SummerSlam yeah and in New York mm -hmm. I think that'd be a, a about the hottest crowd you could get for something like that. A lot of Russians live in New York. Oh, yeah. Huge Russian district. A lot of Russians. A lot of Borsh. So many communists. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of Russians in the crowd. <laughs> it's so much fun, I'm sure. And Vladimir hey, will yeah. be there. Front row. A lot of Vladimirs. Mm -hmm. So many. But well, you mean talking about the well, super fan. Putin. Well, what's her name's oh. mother was from Brooklyn, too. <laughs> Wait, who are you talking about? I'm talking My about... My mother yep. was born in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> you know she gonna be there. <laughs> All right, that pretty much covers what's up. No, there's someone we need to talk about. Oh, well, go ahead. We need to talk about Seamus for a minute. Uh, and I'm going to tell you all something. We do? Seamus impressed me at Battleground. Okay. And it's rare that I will say that. Uh -huh. <laughs> but Seamus impressed me. Cool. He had a he had a that match with him and Orton was fabulous. F fabulous is a, it's a word. Um, I'd say it's <laughs> fabulous. I did not like that match. I don't know if we're watching the same match. <laughs> I enjoyed the hell out of that match. Fella! So so I I want to know though what's gonna happen with Seamus in this briefcase now because if it were me, I would take Seamus off TV for a little bit. Have us forget. Don't hype that he has the briefcase all the time like they do with a lot of them. And have him just come out and sneak attack someone with it. That brings up a good point. You heard it from Chuck. No Seamus on TV. No Taker on TV. Who else we taking off TV, Chuck? Well, hell yeah. I'm very opinionated No, but today. You, you brought up a good point. Undertaker, Tombstones. Oh, wait. No, forget it. I was going to say, Rollins was already beat up, but then Rollins disappeared, so Sheamus couldn't even cash in. Forget it. But I'm right. saying, I'm saying, you know, we always that get reminded and have the hype that this person has the briefcase and all this stuff. And, I mean, I would just take him off TV for a couple of months, not even remind us that he has the briefcase, and have him come out and win it that way. I like the idea, Dale. I don't think you need to do that at SummerSlam. I mean, we could try it at some other point. I just think I we need to have SummerSlam. better storytelling with Sheamus. That's why I didn't like the match. 
Orton and Sheamus meant absolutely nothing. It felt like another pre-show match because okay, but, there was no stakes in that match. Yeah, it's just Orton but from you St. Can't, Louis. But you know. can't take away from the fact that they put on a very good physical match together. No, they did. But the thing is, th- this is why we said right from the start, n- why is Sheamus holding the briefcase? <laughs> no, it, I, yeah. it, It's not exciting. It's not exciting knowing that Sheamus has the briefcase. That's all. I, I agree 100%, but usually I am Sheamus' biggest hater. Mm, yeah, you will. And I have to give credit where credit is due. No, sometimes it was a fine match. It's just, what's it going to be? Look, the here? point. Of, you know what the point of that match was? They were in Randy Orton's home state. Yes. And having Randy Orton win that match is a huge pop from the crowd. And to start off and the it show, it starts agreed. to show off with the crowd hot. That's agreed. the point of it. That's why it was there. That's all it needed to be. Agreed. So, hey, on the bright that side, that's not all it needed to be because that's only concerning about fifteen thousand people. Then you have every single other person watching that match that didn't really care at all. So I don't think it's really that much of a credit for putting it on the card. True. Well, Dale, we should mention this at least for a few seconds. Uh, your boy Bad News Barrett is still the king. Right? Yeah, I guess. Yay, or something. Okay. Just wanted to put it out there for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's good if it makes a difference for how they use him, then great. But if it just means he's going to continue to flop around in this Flippity. also bad storytelling land that Seamus is trapped in currently, it's like, well, I, uh, I guess it doesn't matter what his gimmick is. Yep. Well, just, you know, he won, so hey yeah. how, how about How about that Big Show Miz segment, though? I loved it. That was Big Show came down great. in soccer dad clothing and just punched him out and Miss just and then twirled Raw, around. He's like, he's like, "Am I still missing?" Loved it. Am I still missing? Love the Miz and Big Show what they're doing. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Very good. Fantastic stuff. Ho- hopefully Ryback. Hopefully Ryback is uh, all cleared medically by the time SummerSlam rolls around because I, I think they still want to do that triple threat. I mean, no, it, he it will be. Be given the time. Staph infections. You just got to take antibiotics for a good week or two. But like, it, if, if he caught it early enough, it shouldn't be that big of a hindrance. To Depending on where it is, like muscular wise, hopefully it's his didn't, knee, right? Yeah, hopefully it didn't tear into his muscles too much, but um, I'm sure they caught it early enough. So SummerSlam won't be a problem, I don't think. But they're doing a great job of keeping the fire burning in that one. So and Miz and Big Show, man, they're pros. I mean, they're you know Miz, his character's awesome, and and Big Show is Big no. Show, the Big Show. But before we move what, on from- uh, what, what thing do you, that we haven't talked about at all that I think that a lot of people were very torn about online was the way that Kevin Owens and Cena ended. Yeah, How did y'all of, feel about it? A lot of people are mad. I, I, Kevin Owens just got here. I'm not concerned about, oh, they're burying Kevin Owens. I don't... <laughs> I don't think that's a burial. I, I think Kevin Owens is going to stand on his own and be phenomenal no matter what he does. I don't think he needed to win the title. Am I? Do I, th- do I wish he did? Sure, I wish he did win the title, but he didn't. God forbid, Johnny. God forbid. Oh, I know. You Someone a, beat Cena twice. You had a Twitter spat. I know. You had a, you had a Twitter spat. I get it. And I was I'm defending awesome. Cena. Yeah. This is what happens when I defend Cena. I know. <laughs> I, wanted always I, to win, I don't but, think the finish, I think people put a lot of effort. On, I mean, a lot of emphasis on the finish. But I agree with you, Johnny. It's like the dude kicked out of. We don't even really see that many elevated AAs or or whatever um, from Cena. So for him to kick out of that super big move, I thought was was awesome, and the match was so good. I just yeah. for me, I thought it was going. But again, they may have other plans, so this is, could do be you, why they didn't. But I thought think, it was going to get a bit of a dusty finish or something where Rusev or Cesaro or somebody was going to come out and interfere with it. But I, I don't, don't think that feels Otherwise, over. I mean, I thought it was awesome. I think it's great that you have a guy talking a bunch of shit, getting in Cena's face, beating him once, and then tapping out. So he's this, he's this featured player this whole time, and now yeah. he's tapped out. So now the crowd can chant, you tapped out, and keep getting under his skin right. to keep riling him up. Like, this is character extension. Right. He, I, yeah. I don't think this feud is over, you know. I I hope it's not, because I don't want Cena Rollins at SummerSlam. Well, how about, how about our boy, you know, I think this is a good time to mention that our buddy was on Raw last night. With his Rob U.S. Sh- champion <laughs> painting. Raw is Shamburger. Raw is Shamburger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Way to go, Rob. My and boy. I, I don't know. I didn't see it on Raw, but I read somewhere, and I could maybe have just completely made this up in my head for some reason, but didn't? wasn't there a segment maybe in between a break or something where Owens destroyed the painting? I didn't see that, Dale. I, didn't see, I thought I read that somewhere. So maybe I'm just completely wrong. Unless it was an exclusive online thing. Maybe maybe I just read it wrong or something, but if that happened, I don't think it's over. Yeah. 
You know? But either way, I, I don't... Like, look, they're still involved. Owens was in well, that you know match last night. People love Owens so much due to his history and the fact that he's made such an impact. And the fact that he lost all the... Everyone on the internet went to the whole, like, conspiracy thing. Like, oh, it's, it's Kevin Dunn out to get Kevin Owens. I don't know. He may be. Everyone knows Kevin Dunn is not the most liked individual, and he is in a position of power. But at the same time, to my in my opinion, the cream rises to the top. I think Dean Ambrose is going to be just fine. I think Dolph Ziggler is going to be just fine. And I think Kevin Owens is going to be just fine. I think eventually the right thing will happen. Well, so it's a showcase. It's every so often you got to showcase somebody, and I know the argument will be made like Cena's always showcase, but... That's true. I, you know, it's always the point of, if you had a business and that guy shows up early every day, works harder than everybody else, and leaves last... Yeah, you're gonna. Use and that also, guy when too. it comes down to it, Cena makes no, some money. He does. It's not even that though. It's Cena is the number one in sales. I mean, right. that I think that fuels what they do with him more than. Yeah, he's committed and stuff, but we're beyond all that. They know he's committed. We're in year twelve or thirteen or whatever. It's his. He still brings the most money in. Exactly. So you gotta see to that guy. You do. I, I do. I apologize. It was before Battleground that he destroyed the painting. I even I didn't oh, know that either. So that happened. Kevin Owens, art connoisseur. Yeah, he was not happy about it, and he's not going to pay for it either. No. Moving on. A lot of stuff happened on Impact this last week. Bully Ray is the new law, which Yay. is great news. That means Dixie Carter will hopefully not be on television. So Yay. we're on board with that. Well, how about our boy Eli Drake? Yes. He beat the holy hell out of Drew Galloway with that crutch. About time. Loved how that episode ended. Drew Galloway won a 20-man battle royal to face EC3 for the title. And Eli Drake slams on the back with that crutch. His knee was fine the whole time. EC3 hits the one percenter for the win. And Eli Drake walks away. Couldn't have been done any better. That means Eli Drake... He is rising, my friends. That's he awesome. Rising. That was Hell good yeah. stuff. I want to see him and EC3 as a team at some point. Could be. Could be. They would be amazing together. You want ED and EC3? It could be a decent, like, maybe it's Galloway and Micah or something taking on EC3 and Eli Drake. I don't know. Either way, Eli Drake and Drew Galloway, that could be a really good feud that elevates Eli because, honestly, I, I like Drew Galloway. He's been talking too much. It's just every promo is the same. Well, standing up for wrestling. We get it. Say something different. Eli, shut him up. He is talented, though, man. Like, like I'm looking forward to their feud. Yeah. Dale? I, I think these two are great. I, I agree with you. It's a little long-winded, but I'm hoping that this is just a way for Eli to be able to finally get over inside of TNA. Because mm-hmm. he's just been kind of waiting in the wings there in that in that faction that they had going. So this is, this is a great way to elevate both guys, really. Yeah, Eli needs a mic in his hand. Because uh, he's really good. He's got catchphrases for days, and um, Drew Galloway would not be able to keep up with him on the mic. And that's so I really think. I just hope he doesn't become like one of those cool heels. I want Eli to be like a, a, a bastard. That's Listen, what we want. All I know is that gravy train's about to start chugging along. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Eric Young, he's still a psycho. Wow. Attacks Kurt Angle and then pile drives Sergeant Chris Melendez outside the freaking ring. How are you going to attack two American heroes at once, you damn Canadian? That's Eric Young. For you, man. That's Eric Young right now. Evil. He's going to ruin your tour. He better not. It's, it's what he's trying to do. That's what he's doing. You he, should talk to EY and tell him to stop. I don't know him, Scott. You got a Twitter machine. I'm not going <laughs> to. You know what's funny, Johnny? We were talking about the thing that happened on Twitter earlier. Yeah. EY is part he's of the, the reason one, it happened. He's the one. He retweeted you, and that incited all the fury. <laughs> it did. That guy was angry. Oh, my Lord, baby. Johnny, you're going to be an American hero after this. Will I? EY may come after you next. <sighs> I, I, have, I don't want to take a pile driver. Start. I feel like I need to tell you. Lock, lock the this. doors. <laughs> so, so... EY's coming after you. Chuck's going after Undertaker. This is heavy stuff. Hey, Dale, who, Dale who's your feud with? <laughs> Uh, whoever's booking Wade Barrett. Oh, oh Dale versus nine people. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I love that. Uh, but over. Oh yeah. By the way, we have a new Knockouts champion. Um, I'm not thrilled about it, but. Yeah, I know. It broke... Whoa! What's with the hate for Brooke? I've never been a fan. It's not. It's not hate for Brooke, even though. Eh. Uh, it's more about Taryn Terrell being the most awesomest, and I yeah. wanted her to just be the champion until the end of time. It, it just came out of nowhere. I don't. Brooke, she came back recently. 
She's had a couple of matches here and there. I like Gail Kim coming back and helping Brooke out. I dig that. But no, I don't. I it's don't. setting up. It's setting up a great feud. Taryn Terrell has had the title for a while. She was a great champion, no doubt about that. I don't think the title but reign was over, point, man. At some point, title reigns have to end. They do, but this yeah, one was the, still going the chase strong. Chase wasn't there. Yes, thank you. That, thank I you. think that's what was lacking. No chase. I, I liked it because it was unexpected. And I don't. Brooke to me has no character. I don't. All right, she's hot and has the best body in wrestling. Okay, cool. Who cares about that? That's not. I mean, well, obviously we care about that, but, but that's, that's my not point. the point. She here. has no character. I want to shape for for the reign Taryn Terrell has had to where she was champion, gained an entourage that has protected her. I want someone to chase for a while before all of a sudden this is just like thrown together. Like, oh, Brooke wins. She's the new champion. Really? You're going to attach the championship to her now? All right. I'm, Damn I'm it, a, Corrigan. Damn I'm, it. Look, I'm sorry. I'm a fan of Brooke. I'm okay with this. Because she's from Texas. Dale? No, that is not why I'm a fan of hers. Not at all. Did she send you a, te- did she send you a sweet text sometime or something? <laughs> yeah. Listen, the fact, did the, fact that, the fact that she and I might be friends has nothing to do with this. Nothing. Uh-huh. Might be uh-huh. friends. Uh-huh. Excuse me, I had something, I had something in my throat. Sorry. Right, go, right. Go, go ahead, Dale. I'm not pleased with this. I'm not pleased with this. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I think it's just like bad storytelling to have all this great. I just wish that it meant more or it was built up better. It's like, oh, okay, I guess Gail is back and she can make things happen, I guess. But like, couldn't Kong <laughs> have been the difference maker? It's just weird. I don't know. It's just here, weird. Here, I don't like it. Here's the way I look at this. TNA has often done things in storyline wise that I'm just like, I shake my head and I'm like, why? And I can say. understand your standpoint on this, Dale. From a story standpoint, it's frustrating because there was no real build to it. I get that. I agree with you there. But from the, the, the way I watch TNA, I guess is a lot different than a lot of people. I watch TNA when I watch it for the matches and for the wrestlers that I like on it. Well, sure. Because their storylines half the time are stupid. No, bottom line. Sometimes. That's, I think lately it's been pretty good. Lately it's been pretty good, but it's TNA, and I always expect the worst That's when geez. it comes to stories. Everybody's got stupid stories. But, but so, yeah. so when I, but, I know, right. but when someone comes in, they can put on good matches and can carry a title and have good matches with it, which I think Brooke can. Mm. I'm okay with that. <laughs> and sorry, you got to understand, I'm, I'm a little... You know, and I'm sure there's others out there too. I'm a little frustrated with TNA at the moment this past week after some stuff that went down with, you know, uh, for those of you that don't know, MVP's gone. MVP's gone from TNA. As is the Beatdown Clan, because everyone except for Kenny King is gone from the Beatdown Clan. And, and Loki, there's just a, Samoa Joe, uh, MVP. And that's, and that's, and you know, and look, without getting into too much detail, that's because stupid and. Bad business practices by some of their management. Well, we know that's been their thing. So, so you know what I mean? Like, there you go. When it comes to stories with TNA, I'm just like, whatever about their stories. I just want to see good wrestling from them. I get it. But to me, Taryn Terrell, that, I loved her as the champion. And I don't think it was over. Johnny, if you were to kiss Brooke, would you keep one eye open? Um, well, I would imagine... Depends on the Depends on if Taryn Terrell was standing behind her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I had my choice, I'll tell you which one I'm going with. Which one, Johnny? <laughs> well, you know I'm Taryn Terrell all day, forever, forever and ever. Mm-hmm. I'm stuttering. I'm so nervous just talking about it. <laughs> no, but I just... Yeah, in, in, my opinion, in my opinion, Taryn Terrell has developed one of the best characters on television in wrestling right now. And that includes WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, which only has a few female wrestlers anyway. Um, anyone. I really do think that. I think she's developed such a great character, and she's so fun to watch. So great. Now she can be part of chasing the title again. I love her body of work, Dale. Everything about it. (laughs) (laughs) That body works. I'm just saying. That that Playboy issue is one that Johnny treasures very much. Was she Mm -hmm. in it? Right, like I swear to God, that. I didn't know that. Was she in Playboy? Yes. When she was when with WWE or after? He needs an issue I, date, Chuck. He needs I, an issue. I don't know, dude. You're sure she was in? Pretty sure. Okay. Well, hey. pretty, I, I, I'm pretty sure about that. That's cool. I don't. I think, I think I've seen it. I think I've seen it mentioned on her uh, Instagram actually. Okay, then I'll I'll do some research. Johnny, when in Johnny, doubt, Shawn Michaels, Playgirl. <laughs> This is backup for you there, buddy. I love you, Johnny. Scott. Johnny's you over here Googling the Playboy right now. Oh, you're the best, Scotty. Can we don't get an have... image up on this screen? Don't, 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 don't let anyone ever tell you any different, Scotty. You're the best. All right, so Lucha Underground, let's run over this. A couple of main points that happened. Vampiro oh accepts Pentagon Jr.'s challenge and chokeslams his ass. And Mil Muertes Dale puts Conan 
in a coffin and attacks Prince Puma. It's about time to put Conan in the coffin. It needed to happen. What? Well, I don't know. I guess. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think. Uh, I, I mean, we knew that Vampiro had. To, he's probably had the itch ever since he's been over there watching all those guys. You know, tear each other apart. So yeah. I, I think, you know, we we actually all we were we got to see where this goes, but uh, it's it's very frightening the two of them. I, I don't know. Uh, there's something about Pentagon. He's probably the best guy to come out of Lucha Underground as far as people that I I wasn't aware of before. Yeah, he has really like he, he brings emotion into it, and I I definitely feel something watching him in the ring. And he's a scary looking dude. Exactly, and for a guy that's not so big. He really yeah. has the frightening factor down. Yeah, absolutely. And to have just basically his theme for the whole season was that uh, he just comes out, breaks people's arms, and then sacrifices them to his master. Do we, do we still don't know what's going on with his master? No, the master said, he said the master will reveal himself when the time is right. Interesting. Wonder who that'll be. Well, Scott Narver was voice, at the tapings. Sure. Mm -hmm. Scott Narver was at the tapings, I believe. So, I like Mil Muertes as well. That guy's awesome. Right? He's just a monster yeah. and, there. And Katarina's phenomenal. Yeah. She really is. She sure is. That character. What she does. I mean, she's such a perfect addition. And now we're going to have Mil Muertes and Prince Puma at uh, Ultima Lucha, which is shaping up, I believe, August 5th it begins. Mm -hmm. It's going to be over a couple of weeks, I think. I showed a couple friends uh, this episode of Lucha Underground who hadn't seen it before. They've just watched, you know, WWE and TNA. Good episode. A great episode. And they were noticing, because they take it for granted now, them cutting things together. Like the whole Vampiro segment is cut together really tightly. Um, and then you have all the music to score it. Yeah. And it's just so cool. It's not wasted. It doesn't feel like you have to watch every single second of a 20-minute promo where there's a lot of wasted motion. Mm -hmm. It's just tight and awesome and just means a lot. It really does. Every second of that show. It's cool. And I, I haven't figured out why WWE hasn't picked up the above ring camera. Like, they've done it for a couple of, uh, you know, ladder matches or whatever, but it's such an awesome angle to see from, you know, whatever it is, 30 feet above the ring or, or whatever. Yeah. I'm surprised we don't see more of that from WWE. I think they can afford a jib. I don't see why not. Yeah. Get a jib. Get a big well, jib. That, that was just a stationary. It's got to be just stationary floating above the ring because the jib is getting the, the other moving shots. I'm talking about just, oh. just a nice clean. You know when they show the Aztec symbol that's in the middle of the yeah. thing? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just surprised that they don't do. It seems like such an easy thing. And actually, they don't use. They put cameras in the four ring posts not too long ago, and they very lightly use those. So they got no for that. Or, yeah, that seems like a real waste when they did that, and then they show yeah. the occasional something like. Just tape a little GoPro in the corner. Yeah. Make it happen. Get a jib. Get a jib. Oh, my God. Get a jib. Get a jib. Right. Call JBL. Get a jib. Uh, Moving. Yeah, there you go. Moving on, uh, NXT, Sasha Banks. Man, we're talking about these divas. Sasha Banks and Charlotte tore it up, teared it down, whatever you want to say. What a match it was. So great. Sasha with the bank statement for the win. Man, what a match. Why doesn't she wear the NXT belt on Raw or the pay-per-views? Maybe because they think it'd be distracting from the whole movement. Kevin Owens wore it. She's a lady. Don't she like jewelry? Well, obviously. I don't get it. Ah, women. Kevin, right. Kevin knows she's a lady, doesn't she like Julie? You're ridiculous. <laughs> Kevin Owens, I think, though, was uh, kind of bringing it out to make a point. Like, I don't need your stupid title. I've got this title. She kind of wants the stupid title. <laughs> so maybe, maybe they feel like it's confusing to have her. But they mention it verbally all the time. Yeah. And what's weird so I is. Know. I don't I figured it out. When they come out, uh, all you see is giant NXT letters on the screen. True. So it's pretty obvious that it's tied into it. Why not show that the lady champ is coming from this show and again get the tie-in of like, oh, she's in there? Well, I'll go watch that show and check out her matches. It is a really good point. And if you notice, especially Michael Cole, he explains things about the NXT people that we see as obvious. Like Michael Cole's like, she calls herself the boss. Yeah, we know. So maybe they assume <laughs> that a lot of people still don't have the network. Or they're just not watching that I mean, show. I mean, a lot of people don't have the network. I mean, if you're watching Raw, you they just have such a wider spread for Raw that I think they explain those things to, you know, only a million people for, you know, 
a little over a million have the network still. Even, even though the exposure is there, it's still. I think I think it's okay because they don't they don't beat you over the head with it. At least they just kind of yeah. get it out there and then try to move on. That's very true. What a match, though. I mean, I I think a lot of like Michael Cole saying stuff like that oftentimes has to do with too is like comes to marketing and merchandising. You know, it's just yeah. to drive that point home so Good that you're point. like, oh yeah, she's the boss. I want to buy that T-shirt that says like a boss or something. You, you know, are or, I, I think that's really what it comes down to. That's a very very good point. Uh, hey, how about this? Jason Jordan, Chad Gable teaming up, getting a cool <laughs> finisher a win. for the W. <laughs> Finally. Ready, willing, and Gable. <laughs> Love seeing them two together. Both amazing wrestlers. Mm-hmm. I mean, amateur-wise, and then now they're trying to make their mark in NXT. I really dug that, that they uh, finally teamed up. Cool dudes, too. What would you name them? What would you give their name? I would love to see them have a name. Right. I don't know. What do you think when you look at them? Well, I know this. I know they did have a little faction that never got made. They were called Shoot Nation. They were a bunch of former amateur wrestlers that were now banded together, but unfortunately it never got greenlit. Okay. I would have loved Shoot Nation, but I don't know what they're going to be now. Okay. I don't think they would. I don't think they would let... The K I mean, even though K Fate is dead, quote unquote, I don't think they would use a name like Shoot Nation inside of the WWE. Agreed. Agreed. I think I think on the yeah. I, I like the I like the idea of teaming up a bunch of former amateur wrestlers together. Mm-hmm. I mean, it almost reminds me of Shades of Team Angle. Yeah. Uh-huh. There you go. World's greatest so, tag team. Did you guys- did you guys see on uh, on Instagram this week that they had Ty Dillinger basically running around all over the place in the background of everybody's photos, holding up some kind of number card, basically the perfect ten. referring to the yeah, referring to his, his new gimmick that uh, um, Sami Zayn told us about uh, last week on the show. I didn't notice but that, was, but I love it. Yeah, it was really funny, and it it really it showed that how much character he can actually pull off even just in some still shots so i was very excited yeah bret hart gave the whole thing a four <laughs> oh lord <laughs> but no i love it though it's about time i want to see ty Dillinger really get a spot and you know with the, some guys moving up to the main roster or being injured there's there's space available and and there's a lot of guys in the next team that sure you know that are going to have a chance to shine now and i think we're going to get to see a lot of more young new talent coming but, up but ty Dillinger's a guy that multiple Superstars in NXT go out of their way to mention. That means you have someone really special. When guys like Sami Zayn and everyone else we've talked to always say, first guy that comes to your mind, Ty Dillinger, boom. That means something. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully they're, they're, they're noticing that, and I hope this Perfect 10 thing works out, because he earned it. Um, he did a taping at Championship Wrestling a few years ago, before he went to NXT. Ooh. And uh, really, you, you, you can tell then, like, man, this guy's good. And so uh, let's hope he gets his moment. That'll be awesome. Uh, moving on. Oh, Eva Marie speaks. Guys, she said something. So there you go. Yay. And the network didn't crash, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Dale, I, sh- I, hope this, I hope this work that she's doing with um, the Brian Kendrick uh, pays off. Like, I really want this to be a transformation for her because I understand that they like her. She's super hot and whatever. That's kind of the old mentality. But it would be so amazing if we actually saw her get to be something good in the ring because that is really the probably the weakest debut of a woman in the ring that I can think of personally. It was Eva Marie. Yeah, it was uh, like a year ago or a year and a half ago, whatever. It was the drizzle. So if S. Brian Kendrick could pull it together for her and, and make her into a a decent wrestler. I mean, that would that would well, look. If there's, if there's anyone that you can learn from that yep. knows how to just wrestle and is a good teacher, it yep. is Brian Kendrick. <laughs> you know, that's true. Spanky runs a good show. Runs a good show when he puts them on out here. He has a good school and he has yeah. a lot of talent and knowledge to give to people. Hey, we're rooting for. Her. I, I she's uh, wrestling on NXT this week, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, hopefully, it gets blue pants. <laughs> We'll see. Uh, real quick, Ring of Honor, Mark Briscoe, Jay Lethal, just an incredible match. The House of Truth kept sending out so many people to screw Briscoe. It finally worked. A low blow and lethal injection for the win, and they have some really cool events coming up. we got to have Nigel back on the show to talk about it. Also, Austin Aries made his first appearance in Ring of Honor in the last five years this past weekend. I don't know when it's going to air, but I heard it was amazing, and so that's really cool when it comes to that. So before we get to Sergeant Slaughter, any other comments, gentlemen? Yeah, I just want to... Uh... Uh, give a shout out or more so send some uh, love the way of my buddy Kurt Angle. You How's know, he doing? For those of you guys that haven't heard, 
Kurt had some complications after his neck surgery recently to have he that did, yeah. cyst removed or whatever. Yeah. And he was in the hospital this last week. Um, he's doing okay now, at home recovering. Good. But, you know, um, I guess he was feeling numbness in his extremities. Uh, from, Jesus. I guess there was some liquid on the spinal cord yeah. or something from the so surgery. I don't quite understand how it works. His yeah. wife tried to explain it to me. I didn't uh, quite make perfect sense, but I can explain to it to you. Okay, yeah, uh, please. A, a lot of times what happens is when you have to have a tumor removed, um, you know, it was in his neck area. Right. What will happen a lot of times is fluid will develop in recovery, and the fluid will push on the spinal cord, and that's why he was noticing numbness in all four extremities because if you have something pushing on your spinal cord in the neck, everything's affected. And I can only imagine how scared he must have been when you start going numb. Your whole body starts going numb. That's terrifying. And so well, luckily he noticed it right away. They got him to the hospital. They had the emergency procedure, and it seems like everything's going to be fine. He is at home recovering. Um, I've spoken to his wife a few times over the last week. Um, he's okay. I've texted with him a bit. Um, he's in a lot of pain, but he's recovering. Yeah. He's doing okay. So, you know, the, the hard thing for him is, too, is that, you know, Kurt, uh, he can't take any, like, real medicine or anything like pain pills or anything like that for it because right. for – Everyone knows Kurt has been sober for some time now, and he's you know not drinking, not taking pills, not doing whatever. So I know that the recovery process is a little bit harder for him, and I just you know thoughts and prayers are with you, buddy. You know what? Take your time, Kurt. Relax. Enjoy the kids. Enjoy your wife. Everyone loves you, and we've already expressed our you know appreciation for him. So send some happy tweets to Kurt. Yeah, happy tweets, happy That's thoughts. He does. Medicine. He does. He is really good about getting back to people on Twitter, dude. Yes, if you yeah. if you tweeted him, I pretty sure at some point he will answer it. We'll so. Read it. Yeah, because he told me the other day, he's like, I was like, aren't you supposed to be sleeping when we were texting? He goes, I had too much pain to sleep, so I'm just talking to my fans on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> he's the best, and, and we yeah. wish him the best of luck. Take your time, Kurt, and we all love you. So with that said, well, from one legend to another, Dale and I American were lucky. American hero. Uh, he's an American hero. To, one one to American hero American to another. American hero. An, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. uh, Dale and I were lucky enough to sit down with Sergeant Slaughter at Comic-Con. And Dale, what a, what a fun interview. How great a guy is he? I mean, we could have talked to him for a full hour or something. I mean, if, if they weren't cutting us off for time. He is just so comfortable and such a cool dude. And, uh, yeah, take a listen. Absolutely. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy our interview with Sergeant Slaughter. Ladies and gentlemen, WWE Hall of Famer Sergeant Slaughter, welcome, sir. Uh, Ted Hutt. That's okay, a beautiful it is. Didn't even have to ask. Now listen up, too. <laughs> How are you? So here we are at Comic-Con. This is really the WrestleMania for the whole comic book world. Have you done this before? Because I'm a little overwhelmed by everything. Yes, I've uh, been out here uh, four or five times. Wow. And uh, every time it gets bigger and bigger, of course. And uh, sometimes you see the same faces and sometimes you see the new faces. A uh, uh, young lady came by this afternoon and... I uh, said, hi, I bet you 10 years ago. <laughs> and, uh, of course, she was taller, and and uh, you could see over the uh, the table. And it's funny how that happens. That's amazing. Amazing. Wherever you, wherever you go, they always say you have fans of all ages, which is, is true because I... Uh, some of the, the real little ones uh, that can't even hardly speak, they uh, smile on at you and waving, and they're not afraid because all the uh, while that uh, they're on their way to meet you, their mom and dad or their grandparents or their aunts and uncles, and they're talking about you that uh, uh, I was their heroes. And uh, it's just it's a funny situation. Very, very seldom do you have uh, the little ones that are, you know, shied off or they want to come up and get a headlock or a cobra clutch and and uh, we have a lot of fun with it. It's funny you say that he put Bob Back or Bob Backlund put him in the crossface last oh year. And honest to God, it was it was snug. It's I, snug. I think I almost passed out. I know. Actually. It I've wasn't. Been it wasn't. It a few times. <laughs> uh, speaking of, of photos, if you Google my name, which I I do on occasion, yeah, uh, one of the top photos that pop up is a picture of me with you and Gary, uh, who used to work at yes. WWE yes. back at SummerSlam, like oh oh six oh seven right. somewhere around there. Right. 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 <laughs> um, so what's your role as a, I know you're an ambassador for WWE, but what does that entail exactly for you? Well, it's a it's a long list of things to do. I uh, do comic cons and uh, and do a lot of uh, baseball games and uh, some golfing events. I go to uh, children's hospitals, veterans hospitals. Right. Uh, we do a lot of work with the MDA and uh, Special Olympics. Of course, uh, John Cena uh, does a lot of work with uh, with our uh, uh, Make a Wish. So. 
even though I do some, uh, I try not to broadcast those too many. So uh, that's kind of John's little. Uh, uh, it's his big endeavor. B- yeah. Big endeavor, and I don't want to get in his way. And you know, we've been doing the Make a Wish uh, since I joined the WWE in 1979. Wow! But I'm glad that uh, John jumped on board and uh, and you know truly loves to do it. And, you know, it's different than being told you have to do something or go go to here, go to the hospital, go to go uh, see some children. And and but when you go on your own, and uh, you know, I very seldom ask for cameras to come. Come in to a room, or sure. uh, any, unless the parents want it. If the parents want to have pictures taken, that, that's that's different. So uh, that, it's just a, a lot, a lot of uh, things to do. A lot of times I'll, I'll go out to uh, like this last year we went to San Francisco and all around the Bay Area and promoted WrestleMania. And uh, coming up in, in Dallas, I'm sure I'll have some things to do there. And, and about the last uh, five or six years, I've been going and promoting. Uh, you know, on sale of, uh, of the match itself and, and the Hall of Fame and, and the access. And it, it's uh, it's you know, a good gig. <laughs> it's a lot of travel. Yeah. yeah. And I want to go back to what you said earlier. You know, you've transcended generations. You have fans of every different age group because you've stayed in the public light. How cool is it to have someone, say, our age or maybe in their 40s or 50s, bring their kids up and they're both fans of you? That's got to yeah. be such an amazing yeah. feeling. It's a cool thing. You know, you yeah. don't you don't realize that uh, you you reach that many people, uh, that many fans, and the uh, the WWE universe is, is massive. It's hard to explain how massive it is. And jumping on board with Mattel and and making it even more, you know, uh, come to life. And, and uh, you know, it, it's it's one of those things that the uh, the WWE wanted to do. They wanted to make this bigger than life. And, and uh, so far, so far they succeeded. Well, I can tell you one thing. I know we both hated you in 1991. <laughs> Good. Good. What, what was job. that like? Uh, knowing that job. your character was siding with, I'm sure you answer this all the time, but I've always wanted to ask, to know that your character was doing that in the middle of what was happening, Right, right. that was polarizing, yeah. to say the it least. Was, that wasn't the first time that I was a villain, so you know, it, it, uh, it was a little bit tougher at that particular time, because I sided with Iraq, but uh, long story short, I was uh, coming back from my second uh, tour of duty with the WWE, and Vince McMahon's father was running the company, yet, and I uh, we were sitting at a restaurant having dinner, and how great it is to have the Sarge back, and you're the best villain we've ever had. And oh I said, well, if you think I'm a good villain, you got to see me as a as a hero. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you got the Iron Sheik from Iran, Ayatollah Khomeini, the Black Hawks going down, the hostage situation, the uh, murder of the uh, Marines at the embassy. We never really got a chance to punch Ayatollah in the nose. You know, uh, Carter's administration went through, and here, here come Reagan. He, he put the law down, but nobody ever really got to, you know, take a, a cobra clutch to uh, I told the commanding. So I said, why don't you let me take on, you know, the Iron Sheik? And uh, of course, Fitz's father said, no, 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 oh no, we can never, never make Sarge a. Uh, a hero, and uh, of course, Vince saw all the writing on the wall. And a short time after that, I, I went out and challenged the Iron Sheik to a match, and uh, that started the whole hero type concept. And then the turn made it that right. much more right. Yeah. So then when I uh, I left and went with uh, Hasbro and went with GI Joe, and after I got out of that, I couldn't be with both companies. Vince gave me an opportunity to stay with the WWE. The, WWE or go uh, with Hasbro, so I chose to go with the uh, the toy company because I figured I could always be a wrestler, can always be a wrestler, can't always be the uh, first and living GI Joe character. So I, that's how I uh, jumped on board with them. And, and when that contract was over, I got a call from Vince uh, McMahon, and he had an idea, I wanted to go to WrestleMania Seven with this big battle, and I figured he was going to take. Uh, my character in G.I. Joe and just make it the uh, you know, real, 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 real American hero. Mm-hmm. But he had other ideas and uh, yeah, he when, did. When, he, uh, when he laid it on to me, I was like oh great, that this, had this to, is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. God. Of course, everybody else was uh, against it and didn't think I should do it, but I went with it and uh, I'm not the kind of guy that lays back and 
and uh, just kind of uh, does what they tell me to do. I just do what I want to do. Speaking of which, the ultimate puke promo. Yeah. I imagine nobody was giving you. That had to be all you because that was oh, one yeah. of the greatest promos of all time. Yeah, yeah we always uh, prided in our, our promos because we had so much time to say so many things and get our point across. And I was, uh, I happened to be a master at uh, knowing where I wanted to start and where I wanted to end. And uh, with a character like the ultimate puke, I mean, it was just, uh, there never was enough time. You know, you, you, five minutes was never long enough. So, uh, but uh, God rest his soul, he was a, a, a great uh, a character in himself. And, and uh, we had some real knockdown, drag out battles. I'll never forget watching it, that, watching yeah. it live. That promo yeah. where you just, when you're staring at the camera at the very, very end, right. your seconds are now numbered. Like, I, w- I wanted to cry yeah. when I was like 10 years yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those uh, proud moments that I always look back at. And, uh, you know, there weren't any writers or scripts and things back then. That's crazy. Uh, you mentioned the Hasbro days, and then we're here at Mattel. So yeah. there's probably, I don't know, how many figures have been made in your likeness? Do you have, like, a room at your house dedicated to it or anything? I, uh, I don't have a room, but I've got boxes and boxes of them. But uh, <laughs> last time I counted, I think I have 32 action figures of all shapes and sizes uh, wow. from both companies. And, and uh, it, it's just a, a real honor to, to be associated with both companies. Uh, I think I'm the only wrestler that is uh, has an action figure for uh, Mattel and, and Hasbro. Wow. So it's uh, I, and, I was, and I'm, I'm just so thankful uh, that uh, WWE uh, allows it to happen once in a while uh, only because this is the 30th year that I would have uh, been with, with uh, G.I. Joe and, and uh, they honored the uh, respect to you know, it's one of a kind. You know. yeah. there's, now, only, there's only been one living G.I. Joe. Uh-huh. And, uh, of course, it, I, couldn't, I couldn't have been a G.I. Joe without the WWE putting me in the ring also. Now, now I was surprised when they made the, the movies for G.I. Joe that you didn't make a cameo in there. Was there any talk about that? or? Oh, I, I've uh, been wrote, I've written into each uh, movie, but <laughs> because of the, uh, you know, uh, toy companies and uh, litigation, oh, I see, things I like see. that. Uh, was weren't able to do it. In fact, the second movie, I had to, they, they rewrote it, mm. and uh, Bruce Willis was supposed to be Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, uh, I had a suspicion I mean, that maybe, Slaughter yeah, was supposed to be Bruce Willis. He's the original Joe, or right, whatever. Yeah. Right. So, uh, but uh, it was uh, it was heartbreaking. But that's just the way uh, the business is. And, yeah. Uh, the close we're, out. I... We're, we're hoping to you know just keep peace. Well, the close out. Speaking of GI Joe, to let you know, when I was a kid, I had my own GI Joe Wrestling Federation. And you were the champion for like six years running. Oh, thank you. So thank you. another accolade you didn't realize you had. That's yes. good booking, in my opinion. Yeah, that's so gotta, that's got to be a, a great. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, when you think about it, in action figures, that's probably a, a long, long ring. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of heat from the other GI Joes. Oh. Just so you know. <laughs> thank great. you so much. It's great. been awesome. It's been an honor. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, you're dismissed. <laughs> Keep up the good work, and that's an order. A ten hood. That was Sergeant Slaughter, y'all. I have integrity! That's right. <laughs> that was from the Ultimate Puke promo. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest of all time. It's a very good promo. Gosh, that was just like... It's, it's, I had to ask him about it. And he was like, yeah, back then, nobody told me what to say. I was like, I can tell! <laughs> you can't write... The, the That promo could not be written by anyone but Sergeant Slaughter. Dude, Sarge was the man. Still, Still is. is. Are you kidding me? Still is. He's Still an amazing is. ambassador. He's a G.I. Joe. For God's sake. Hogan didn't get that. No. Hogan wasn't a G.I. Joe. No, I don't think. Can you trust Hogan on the front lines? I don't know. That's a real a, American no. hero. Yeah. No, because he'd be a terrible soldier because he's going to rip off his body armor right away. Thank you. Trying and to intimidate anybody. the blonde hair, the enemies could see it right away. Mm-hmm. I don't think those pythons could have fit in the uniform anyway. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, not regulation pythons. Dale, what do you think? I think Sergeant Slaughter made an amazing G.I. Joe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, it sounds like he's got quite the life going now, too. And being the ambassador means that he just gets to go and do all the cool stuff, like Comic-Con and, like, celebrity golfing tournaments and just, I don't know. He's, he's got it made in the shade. How much fun is he having, too? He seems like he really loves going around and meeting. Like, just like Jimmy Hart was at SummerSlam, he's just so happy to be doing it. 
He gets paid to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to see the legends actually still loving it, because you often wonder, like, because the business is how it is, like, surely, I mean, obviously people do get burnt out, but it's nice that a lot of these guys still still like out the passion. Yeah, man. And Sergeant Slaughter, he's just, gosh, can you imagine, he can go on for hours. I would love to sit down with him and just be like, all right, tell me a story. And he would just, <laughs> okay, well, let's start off here. <laughs> Amazing. Story time with Sergeant Slaughter. I'm sure he'll be on the network before we know. <laughs> <laughs> he probably will. But that was so fun, and, and he was so cordial to us, and just I think he really enjoyed the interview too. So um, a great experience for us for sure. Absolutely. All right, well, I guess that's the end of the show. Uh, what a time we had. Sergeant Slaughter, thank you so much, and uh, thank you to everyone that's listening and watching. Let's uh, Should we put ourselves over and, and call it a night? Well, go ahead, Chuck. What's up? I want to say thank you to Charlie Sheen for joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. I saw Chuck two weeks ago. He's wearing the same clothes. hey -o! It's true. I like it. The exact same clothes. If you're listening on iTunes or Podcast One, it's Scott Norver is wearing a shirt um, reminiscent of the episode in Kirby Enthusiasm when Ted Danson and um, and I can't think of his name, the guy who created Kirby Larry Enthusiasm. David. Larry David were mm -hmm. fighting over the same shirt. You'd want to because it's but very it's, comfy. It's well, also very similar comfy. to all the shirts Charlie Sheen wore on yes. Two and a Half Men. Two and a Half Men. <laughs> yeah, again, comfy shirts. <laughs> <laughs> You, you don't have to explain to us. I just want to explain to the listeners. I feel good. I know Chuck's trying to tear me down at the end to put himself over. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So why working. don't you put yourself over right now? You've earned it, my friend. You can oh, follow yeah. me at Curtain Jerks on Twitter, and you can listen to my comedy wrestling podcast available on iTunes and SoundCloud. This week we have Progress Wrestling Champion Jimmy Havoc back on the show. Beautiful. Can't wait for that. Chuck, do it. You can find me on Twitter at CRice17. You can find me on Instagram at Chuck Rice. And as always, stay tuned for more details on that awesome project I'm working on with Rob Van Dam. Absolutely. Dale Rutledge. I am The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find me on YouTube.com, dishing on movies for some great recipes. And we'll be doing a contest starting next week, uh, leading into SummerSlam, and we'll have details on that next episode. Can't wait. And the reason we'll have details next week is because we haven't thought of it yet, but we know we're going to do something. <laughs> hey, you're hyping up something. We're professionals, goddammit. Yeah, we're, we're putting over something we haven't thought of yet. Don't you worry. It's going to happen. <laughs> so like it. half the writers so at WWE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're flying by the seat of our pants right now. It's, it's wrestling. It's what we do. All right. At Wrestling Buds on Twitter, everybody. Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds. That Facebook page is growing every single week. Twitter, been a little stagnant. We're ever so close to 3,000 followers. So please hook us up and go to iTunes. iTunes reviews and five-star ratings help us immensely. Also, uh, thank you for watching and listening on uh, AfterBuzz TV, Podcast One. Uh, I'm at Jay Quasto. Brea Improv. If you're in Orange County, July 29th, 8 p.m., I get to headline. Very, very excited. And then I'm heading to the Middle East with Austin Aries, Sergeant Chris Melendez, Thea Trinidad, Hurricane Shane Helms, and Mr. Anderson. And we're going to have plenty of amazing pictures and stories from that as well. So with that said, you guys have a great week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I can't say sentences, so I'm just going to say good night, everybody.